far more even than my own feeling about it, although I, f I was glad that it worked for me to share that with you. I mean, I can get along with feeling unrecognized. You know, I can live out the rest of my life with that. I prefer not to. But for people who don't yet have that integrity and authenticity in this kind of presencing and participation in the world, who don't have, as Krishna used that phrase earlier, the discriminative awareness or intelligence to be able to sift what's coming at you. That's where I get pretty fierce about it. That's why it's important to make distinctions, because the old ways don't work here. So I'm thrilled that you're singing with me now, Britta. That was fast. Yeah. And that's another thing. Yeah. <laughs> what's that? It was overwhelming. Yeah. yeah. That, thank you. That's, that's another, <laughs> another aspect, though, of what's happening. And I think we were mentioning this earlier today, or maybe last night. You folks coming into the work are hot yeah. <laughs> and sharp. Yeah. You know, you're, you're, you're already there. We're so close to, to that, that ownership, that, that clarity in yourself. And it doesn't mean that it may not, that it, that it won't take you years to go into your second birth awakening. There's a maturity to the whole uh, Michael, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> The, the, the word, the, the zeitgeist. Zeitgeist, yes. <laughs> now we got to explain what it means. What does it mean? Zeitgeist. Yeah, the, the spirit of the, the, the whole scene has changed. It has, it has evolved. And, and the, 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 the whole process, I, I'll venture a prediction. Over the next three to five years, we're going to find that we're changing some of the ways that we teach this and some of what we teach because the work itself is evolving. And a lot of what's making that evolution happen is the quality of the people coming in, the degree to which they don't need certain kinds of focus that were crucial in the mid to late 90s and even through most of the last decade. Christians. So this just, for me, just speaks to what Ted brought in this morning, I think, or yesterday maybe, where he said that way back, and by the way, this is the first thing he said to me on the phone in 1997 or 1998, um, that you said that waking down is a finishing school. Yeah. And now, at this point in time, there's so many more people who are in a position to be finished. That, and they've gone so much further with those other dharmas, like you were saying, that you have nothing against, that they're beautiful people, but you're a ghost when you're in their midst. So many people have gone through, including, I know, including Britta, have gone through those schools and gone to the max. And yes. all the Inigo folks and all the satsang and vaita zen, they really work, did their work to such a huge degree now. And those folks are yeah. And wow, we're really reaping the rot big time, wonderfully. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, reaping the rot. I mean, who would say something like that? <laughs> we would! Let's bring them down! I mean, you know, a couple of, uh, just, just quickly, um, a, a, a couple of recent examples. So Linda and I were interviewed by Rick Archer on Buddha at the Gas Pump. Mm -hmm. If you haven't gone to www.buddha at the Gas Pump or batgap, B-A-T-G-A-P dot com, go there. This is a guy who interviews ordinary people who've gone through awakenings. And many of them are not teachers, a bunch of them are. And he had us on after actually having talked with... Ted and Hillary and Sandra and Stephen, Stephen Winifred and Faction Sharon. Yeah. Yeah, so you have a whole bunch of waiting down teachers on, which is really cool. And he had been wanting to talk with us. So we had uh, the first two hour session and it was just wonderful, really juicy. We loved it, he loved it. He said, I still got lots of questions. Let's do it again next week. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so in the intervening week, we stimulated a furor uh, on the batgap.com uh, bulletin board, you know, people's responses. And one of our friends in Fairfield, which is where Rick lives, Fairfield, Iowa, uh, read through all of them. There were over 110 different responses. <laughs> and he gave us a report. He said, <laughs> he said, well, he says, basically, uh, if I can speak bluntly, it's like you guys really did not work for the Advaita fundamentalists. <laughs> you know, the, 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 the serious transcenders, for whom, he said, he said out of the four hours of your discussion with Rick, there was only a half hour that they spent their time responding to. It's like the rest of it went right by them. And it was all the stuff about our positive relationship to ego. And apparently Linda had really, really frosted him <laughs> by saying, I love my ego. <laughs> so so there, you know, there, apparently, apparently there's some of the dialogue was, oh well, the wife of the founder, you know. <laughs> and, and then there was a range, he said, there were some people who were defending you guys and really appreciate what you're coming up with, but most of the responses were, People are having a hard time. Mm. And he, he said, in fact, there were so many that they divided into camps. <laughs> Ranging from they're there, they're harmless, just let them do their thing, to on the other end, these people are dangerous, <laughs> have to be dealt with. So that's one side. And then another one was that uh, we applied to present at a Hey, Samuel, can we just say something quickly about that, though? Our reaction to hearing? Oh, yeah, please. Yeah, it, oh, it was you. so interesting. Samuel waited to tell me about a lot of the really fired-up responses because he was afraid it was going to rattle me like crazy. No, I didn't think it was going to rattle me like crazy. I thought it might bum you out. Bum me out? Well, yeah, that, could, that too. So he comes to me, and he tells me the whole story, and I'm sitting there, and I'm smiling, and I said, Good. <laughs> you know, good in the sense that, not that I want to disturb anyone, but good in the sense that we're getting a voice out there. We're daring to do it. We're living our truth. We're speaking the, the work the way that he founded it, and we're all living it. And, and, and it feels like those kind of dialogues back and forth is, is rattling people and shaking them up to make them think and drop deeper in their own processes. Mm -hmm. And I bless the, everybody on their journey, and I do think that it's going to maybe generate some thinking and, and feeling on their end. So that's why it was really positive, I felt. Yeah. A lot with the really great responses. No, we got to friends said, he said, one of the things he said, I think one of the reasons that you guys, and we, and we generated far more responses on that website than any other talk had, and he said, one of the reasons that he says, I feel that that happened is because they can't just dismiss you. Mm -hmm. It's like this is, this is something, something a little too authentic here. Yes. And, you know, again, why, why, why should we have some fun with this? Why, what is this about? It's not nearly, well, aren't we great? That's not what it's about for me. For me... It is itself a transmission to and among us that it's okay to really understand what you're actually undergoing and be proud. Not proud like, ain't I the greatest? Proud like, I am a practitioner of this.